All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Green White Checker TV. Tonight we have the second to last race of the season, and tonight we have the Area 51 Super Speedway Truck Series here tonight at iRacing Super Speedway. It will be a 70 lap scheduled distance here tonight. And as always, of course, three attempts of a green white checkered are available should they be needed. One fast repair available for all these trucks. And then if, from there on, I say it's going to be kind of who can who can get there at the end first. And we'll see. Like I said, it could go to 70, it could go beyond. We'll have to wait and see. So I hope you're all having a wonderful evening. And I'll say this is going to finish up our second to last races of the season. And then starting next week, we will be crowning three champions in all three divisions. Tuesday, we'll kick it off with the open wheel IndyCar IR18s at Indy Lampus Motor Speedway. Thursday night, the Xfinity Series will be crowning a champion at Talladega Super Speedway. And then we'll be back here one week's time to crown a champion for the Super Speedway Truck Series as well at Talladega. So let's say they've run two races so far in the playoffs. This is going to be race number three. And so importantly, we got to pull up our point standings as right now, as it runs, Jacob Lee, a three point lead, but I mean, you can see right there, you got the top seven all within 10 points. So still so much that can happen. Um, but Jacob Lee over Gabe Butler or sorry, Cody Nagels, Gabe Butler, Richard Sanchez and uh, Ryan Decker are top five. All those guys within seven points. And then just on the outside as well, uh, Seth Greer, Vicente Guerrero at, um, nine and ten out so against and i mean honestly still like i said even even some of you guys a little further back i would not count any of them out um there's probably a few that are a little too far out to be able to, to pull anything off but i uh, say there's always of course everybody wants to go for those race wins so we'll have to keep an eye and see how that unfolds over the course of the evening like i said right now drivers putting down their qualifying laps as we go up that ticker up on the top right now so you can see at the moment where drivers are as i said it's it, it's going to kind of update and change and ebb and flow as as the qualifying goes on but um right now it looks like we've definitely got some really really close qualifying times especially within the top three it looks like um for that qualifying lap that they're putting down so we'll have to see how how close it is for some right now as you can see let's say we're still going through there's um, right now, it looks like we have had 12 drivers put a lap down. Still plenty left to go. So we'll keep an eye on it. As it cycles through, we'll see kind of where things are. Um, but yeah, I hope you're all having a wonderful evening. Got just over a minute left here in qualifying. And so, yeah, so again, and also, of course, the mention as well. Um, we'll be giving away three pairs of gloves starting on Tuesday night as well. Again, courtesy of our amazing sponsor um, with Jim Herrick and 40 Racewear, giving away a pair of gloves. I say it's going to go in the raffle format for drivers that have run 10 out of the 12 races. All those drivers will be entered into the raffle and we'll be doing a random draw. That way there's no potential kind of no favoritism it also opens up more more drivers to be eligible for for last season uh, it was racing shoes for the season champion um this season going with the glove approach and going with the more of a raffle approach too which i think is going to be a lot of fun i think that's going to be a fun way to do it so basically what we'll do is after the race after the interviews um then we will go ahead and pull up that raffle so definitely if you're interested stay um stay tuned after the race and, and you can watch drivers of course more than welcome to to chime in Always love the the interaction with with the with the viewers, the friends, the family. Uh, makes a lot of fun. And once again, big big thank you and shout out to to Jim Herrick for putting this on. And I said just that little extra incentive. I say it's it's also great because like I said, it helps helps attendance too. Looks like we got a pretty solid crew here tonight. Looks like just over twenty trucks, maybe about twenty three. And with that, it looks like of those twenty three trucks, the qualifying has just completed. So what we are going to do now is we're going to hunt down our drivers and let's see where everybody's going to start off this evening. And it looks like on pole position will be Cody Nagels there by two thousandths of a second over Kevin Freeze. You go two thousand seconds or two thousandths of a second further back to Raymond Rittenauer. 
another two thousandths of a second back to Gabe Butler, and then a whopping seven thousandths of a second back to our fifth place, our um, Richard Sanchez in that number five machine. Uh, joking, of course. Um, and then you get Vicente Guerrero, Eric Lorry, Austin Call, Brandon Briggs, Nick Wing, our top ten. 11th, 12th, you've got Jason Bogart and Jacob Lee. As we continue down the order, then you got Kevin Hash, Corey Buskirk, Patrick Groover, Jack Walls, Seth Groover, Jim Brooks, Ambrose Nabel, Bob Fitzgerald, Bud Steele, Brian Wing, and Ryan Decker. Um, those guys you see from 15th on back opting not to put down a qualifying lap. And then, yeah, Jacob, glad you brought that up too because I was like, well, glad I say, well, yeah, first off, glad to see see here tonight. As I know you were, you were saying you're going to be a little bit tight, so glad you're able to make it on time. Um, but also, I said we talked about some of our sponsors, and um, like I said, we've been given 40 race for a lot of love. Really got to also thank uh, Import Logic Performance because they, again, are the sponsors of the replays this season. So, really, really want to thank them. And um, they, they've been awesome to, to be able to see inside, and I've been able to kind of peek around at their website and see the things they do. And it's one of those deals where you kind of wish you had a car that could use some of their stuff and and be able to take advantage of the of the resources that they have so um definitely really appreciate them um hopping on board this season as well all right just got about two more trucks waiting to grid and then we will see the field roll off here in just a moment and this is gonna be an interesting development right off the bat here I so say I don't know if there's any, if it's a strategy or if there's maybe something going on connection wise, um, but I do not see the five truck Richard Sanchez on the grid here, so maybe not sure if something happened or he's maybe opting to start from the pits. Um, we'll have to keep an eye on that as the run goes on. As you can see, the field here all starting to roll off onto the race track. As and this is actually a pretty difficult um, track just to even get out of the the staging lanes here and get onto the track. Um, again, the, the banking here is just insane. Um, but looks like everybody's done a good job of, of getting through safely. So, yeah, so that's going to be, I think right now that's going to be one of our storylines because, again, he was in the top five in points, but now don't see him on the starting grid. Still don't see me on pit road yet either. So, again, we'll keep a close eye out for that number five machine. Um, see, oh, we got one with a little connectivity issues a little further back. I think that may have been Seth Groover. Or actually, no, I'm sorry, I think it was actually Patrick River that I may have saw have a little bit of hiccups, but looks like we're settling back in now. So uh, hopefully all, all connections are, are back and happy. And so, yeah, so right now of the 23 starters, we have 22 that have taken um, the grid. Right now, um, Ryan Decker, Brian Wang, they're either saving lots of fuel or they're playing chicken and who can stay furthest back here. But, again, iRacing, Super Speedway, definitely its own animal here. Uh, fuel window, I believe, should be in the low 20s. I want to say right around 20 or so, I think, is roughly the fuel number. Um, so expect to see a three-stop race, basically kind of 20, 40, 60 window pending it going green. And, of course, with that window, it could open up some strategies of when to make that final scheduled pit stop. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. Um, as now I do see the five truck has hit pit road. So this is it's a gamble here. I'm a little nervous about it um, just because of how we'll see how it shakes out. Um, that said, the pace car is off, and we're about to hand it over to the green flag, and it, we are down and away. Cody Nagel is going to lead the field here to the green. The great push from the 87 car right now as they head into one for the first time. You see the five rolling out of pit road now. Actually got out of pit road pretty quick here. Um, so the problem is, unless he has some friends that are going to be willing to drop back for him, he's going to probably lose this draft by a fair margin. These trucks in the draft can go 230 plus, so... He's going to need to have some friends to give him some love, but right now looking pretty solo. And I don't think it would work that way. It actually is all based off of where you actually qualify versus where you, um, where you gridded. So he officially still qualified in the fifth position, but right now showing that he's lost 18 spots. So um, that, is a, that is a really good theory. And that actually might be something that changes next season for, for the highest climber. So we'll see if that sticks around. Um, that'll be for the admins to kind of decide. But right now, lap number one is the question mark. Who is going to lead lap one? It will be Kevin Freeze getting that first lap led, pushed by his teammate Gabe Butler. Clears to the bottom. Oh, Cody's going to – he went too low, it looked like. Cody's going to jump middle here with three wide as they're going to try to squeeze through. Cody's going to clear the 25. We'll see if he drops down. Raymond Rittenauer going with him here. And they both clear the 25 car – or truck, I should say – as we head back down the back. 
And as they are about to enter three here shortly, the five just got out of turn two. So again, that's the concern I have. But I mean, again, he's still got a long time before anything happens. So he might just begin just saying, you know what? In case there's something big early, we're going to play it safe. And so, yeah, so we'll keep an eye on them as now Gabe Butler to the point here for the moment. But that's about to change because here comes Vicente Guerrero. Vicente going to get a big push. He's going to take the point this time around and get a lap led in the 14. He drops to the inside line. So right now you got that big shuffle going between these guys. Is now that top side, you've got the 28. Nick Wing, Jacob Lee right behind him. The Gruber brothers there as well. So right now, as everybody's been able to kind of just kind of shuffle around here pretty nicely here early on. Uh, but right now, this time, it looks like the inside line. Well, oh, man, look at the moves being made here. Gabe went to the top. Cody is going to follow. Cody said, nope, I'm going right back to the bottom. We're going to go three wide here. As they enter turn three, everybody's got to give each other room. And you saw that very, very smart there by Jacob. Knew he was not clear. The 28 was. He was not. So he had to stay up a lane, unfortunately, for him. So now everybody's trying to get themselves back sorted. A little bit of wiggling around here. You see the 48 there um, kind of in in not a very comfortable spot for where I would be, but back up front though, Cody looks like does lead that lap in the 06 machine as back in the turn one. And again, these laps will click by pretty quickly with everything we've got going on here. Um, just again, just with all the craziness. And I think maybe a connection hiccup now, possibly for the 18 truck. Don't see him on my timing and scoring now. Um, so we'll keep an eye out for Brandon Briggs, but he was in that main pack. So not sure what happened to Brandon. Um, don't see him on pit road and yeah so we'll, we'll keep an eye there but man these guys are pushing very aggressively here early on looking out the back of Gabe Butler's truck you can see Cody to his inside Kevin Freeze right behind Gabe will lead this lap now giving him that bonus play again that's what all these guys are going for as Gabe immediately jumps to the bottom as soon as he clears man these guys are making big moves here early and I, again I think that's just the risk versus reward is they, they want to get all they can. And man, some of these trucks are looking awfully twitchy, though. As you see Seth here, he's going to jump to the top side. I don't know. He will get some help here. He's going to have the, um, he's going to have Jacob Lee in the 21. But again, though, you lose so much time, I feel like, through the top side. As now you see the six there, he jumps to the top on the entry there, opening the door for his teammates. So a lot of jockeying for a position. Gabe's going to go to the third lane now, hop in front of Seth here. We're going to go three wide once more. Again, we're on lap number five, coming to six now. These guys are racing like we're four to go, three to go here. As look, how, look how much three wide action we got going on. This is where these drivers really need to really mind their P's and Q's here because this is where you get a little bit nervous to me. Um, where I get a little nervous and I also mentioned still Rick Sanchez just crossing start finish line now um, Again right now Richard still is on the lead lap um, But again right I was saying the thing is with what we're looking at right here This might be a very smart calculated decision um, by Rick because man These guys are, are going after it here and um, yeah showing Brandon Briggs actually being retired from the event Unfortunately not sure what happened to Brandon um, as now you see Kevin, he's going to clear to the bottom. That's going to now open up that middle lane for Ryan Decker. He's got one of the Groover brothers behind him there, Seth, this time around. And you got Bud Steele sneaking in there. Brian Wang started towards the back. He's trying to push his way forward. Right now, Ryan is one of the highest climbers. And actually, looks like Brandon just rolling back now out onto the track. Not sure what happens to 18, but unfortunately, now we'll be trapped a few laps down here. So I'll have to keep an eye on that one as well. But... This could be maybe a little bit of, of hope and maybe a little bit of break for the five if they can maybe latch on to each other. Uh, let's say they at least kind of just help their speed out a little bit. But right now, Brennan's already down the back. Richard's right now through the middle of one and two. But right now, the lead battle here at the line. Ryan Decker give him a bonus point in that 48 truck. And I'm, I'm doing pretty well, Karen. I, I, I'm... I say got a little bit of something probably going on, but working on, on getting some medicines and get everything going. But I uh, say these guys kind of help me help make me forget what's going on because of the racing that they put on right now. Um, I hope you all are doing well as also. Um, and yes, yeah, so yeah, no, yeah, he's definitely not too down. As like timing scoring sometimes has a little bit of hiccups there. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely appreciate you checking in, and definitely hope you and the family are all doing well also. As you see, it looks like Seth here starting to drop a little bit back here um, with his brother. 
You see the same thing for the 48 truck. He said, yep, I do what I wanted to do. Got that lap lead. I'm going to go back and cruise right now. So he did a great job. He did a, um, able to get pretty much from the back to the front there, get a lap lead, and now back to that cruise control as it's been pretty much these guys here have been pretty aggressive early on trying to hold that front spot, the 6, the 14, the 25. Uh, they've all been jockeying for the top spot here early on. So right now up front, I was going to say Cody's about to have the calmest it's been here um, with his teammate Vicente Guerrero behind him. And as soon as I say that, here comes Kevin Freeze. Big, big push from Bud Steele. Bud's going to try to get Kevin back to the point. And you can see right there. And just, man, the, the little movements, just how much these trucks are, are just on edge here. As you see, they're just in the foreground there. You could see that five trucks starting to kind of creep into the picture. Um, again, though, right now is is not on the lead lap or sorry is on the lead lap but would become the only truck a lap down as again with the connection issue for brandon he's currently sitting at three down so i think again strategy wise what we'll see from him is once the field gets there he'll probably say yeah you guys go right on by and i'm just going to play it safe here and hold the draft but again could have been something else may have been a, a little bit of a hiccup with the hardware issue things like that uh, we have definitely unfortunately seen that from time to time And now you see that six of Bud Steele, he's leading the outside line here. Big, big push from Brian Wang as they start to work their way down the front. This right now, Bud's just got a nose ahead. It's starting to shrink a little bit. That was a too close to call on there. That would have been one in the thousands of the second between the two of them. Not sure if Gabe or Kevin, or sorry, Bud or Kevin led that lap. Um, but right now, like I said, these laps are ticking by pretty quickly here as we're already halfway through this first fuel stint here, starting lap number 11. As Bud there, you can see, had to kind of try to drop down a little bit, make sure he picked up the draft from Brian. And you can see they're just about to pick up Richard here. And again, I, what I suspect we'll see here is Richard will probably jump straight to the top. There he goes. And he's going to say, okay, everybody, just be, be nice. Don't make any mistakes as you come by me. Let me slot in here um, safely, and then I'll be, I'll be a happy camper as, as we go. And then he'll be able to kind of slot back in with these guys here. So a few trucks that have kind of just decided to play it safe from the get-go are just a little further back here. Right there you see the 10 truck, Jason Bogart. Um, he's dropped about seven spots from he started. We saw the 28 early on Nick Wing. He was being aggressive early, but I think he kind of did job done. He drops to the back. He's going to work right now. It looks like with that 10, as once more up front here, we're three wide again. This looks like the Groover. Well, actually, no, it's not the Groover brothers. It's a Groover brother and a Decker lined up there on the top side. They're trying to push back to the top, and uh, you saw Patrick there kind of in the middle. As I say, again, these things getting a little dicey at, at times. As Oh, man, Seth just found the gap just big enough for that truck to sneak in front. As again, though, all this jockeying for position, everybody's jumping lanes. And like I said, they're, they're being aggressive. Bud Steel does lead that lap, as you can see clearly there, as they continue now down into turn number one. So right now, Cody continuing to lead the way on the outside line now. Now he's got a couple of boot knockers behind him with Brian Wing and Gabe Butler. Now again, he clears. He gets to the inside. His butt is all over the rear bumper there as they enter turn number three. This is one of those races where I'm, I'm kind of happy I'm up here in the booth because I'm, I'm getting nervous. Oh, we got a big trouble in the back. Jim Brooks got in trouble. He is in the wall hard there. No caution, unfortunately. And I think he's already passed the pit entry. That car just, or truck, I should say, completely destroyed. Let's go back and see what happened here to Jim. Get a better look at it here. As you see, drifts up maybe a little bit. Oh, I think in the checkup, I think the, the five got into the back of him, unfortunately. And then just, oh, big, big hit there. So, unfortunately, Jim, I believe, either has, let me double check, I think has taken a toe. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately has taken a tow there. So um, that's going to put him now multiple laps down. And then, of course, now waiting for that tow as well. Um, so unfortunately, early uh, early issues for that 51. And again, still a long, long ways to go. But um, that will be a tough one to recover from here, unfortunately. Oh, a little 
little bump there, it looked like through the turn between the 40 and 32. You could see it just slightly unsettled the 32. Now it looks like we're back okay. Um, I'm seeing Patrick Gruber's truck. Yeah, he's. You can, you'll see that little flash of a truck every so often. That's why you see him all the way up to the top side because he knows his connection is having trouble. So he said, I'm just going to go to the top. Ooh, a little bit of contact there, I think, between the 6 and the 48. Everybody's able to hang on to it. But I think that's what he's doing right now, Patrick, is he's dropped to the back. Yeah, so there, that's a really good call there by Patrick with that connection issue. Um, get to the back that way. Now the hope, though, is he's got to try to make sure he doesn't lose the draft here. So unfortunately, as it's looking, may not be in too good of a spot there. Um, as Jim Brooks, you'll see him in just a moment, just about to roll. He's rolling on a pit road. There he goes on the apron. Toe is done. Fast pair is done. But unfortunately, like I said, with the up, after everything's all said and done, looks like falling now to at least two laps down, potentially three. Um, it's just unfortunately some some bad luck for for him with that contact. And it's things happen very very quickly here at this track. Like I mentioned, it's no exaggeration. These guys going 230 plus. Um, I say we'll actually see if we can pull up our. So I gotta find the right magic button here. There's our magic button. You see Seth Groover now leading the field. 228, 229 as they go through the front. Again, this is him leading. So these guys further back in the draft, they're going to be going even faster. But Seth right there, 232, 233 entering turn number one. And what I'm starting to see now, though, is I'm seeing starting to see kind of that inside line here. We're kind of starting to get that train look going because they know pit stops are looming here as we're on 17, heading towards lap number 18. So say so, we saw Austin call Eric Glory try Eric try to get to the bottom. Austin's able to fill that gap, but I think we'll see Eric here sliding right in front of Raymond Rittenauer in that 87 truck. So he'll be able to do that. So now I'm wondering though, with everybody jumping low here, do we see pit stops this time by? No, we do not. Everybody's going to keep going here, but just the way everybody's kind of singling out though, he really kind of had that vibe. And um, unfortunately for Patrick Gruber, he has lost the draft and the main pack. But he has picked up a help in the friend of the 51 of Jim Brooks. So, um, again, right now, Richard Sanchez, first truck, one down. The only truck, one down. Jim Brooks, two down. And then I believe Brandon Briggs sitting at uh, four down, actually, now at the moment. So, we'll have to keep an eye on them. So, again, that's a great angle. You can see the train that we've got going down the back stretch. Um, I'm saying the weight's all settled in, just Basically, everybody got comfortable here behind Seth in that 32. Again, I don't expect to see any jump dr uh, trucks jumping in this time, but I think potentially next time by coming to lap 20, if not 21, I think that's when we'll see the field here hit pit road. But now again, this is the, the risk versus reward. I, I wonder, have any of these trucks maybe been able to try to save a lot of fuel because this is probably one of the most dangerous pit entries here um, in the Super Speedway Series between here and Atlanta. I'd say it's it's almost a tie here just because of the, the straight, just sheer speed. And then Atlanta as well, just because of how tightly packed you are at the smaller distance. And I think we're about to see some drivers hit the I'm starting to see some drivers jump to the top. I think that's them saying, you know what, we're going to one more. And yeah, here they all come. Now they can make sure everybody gets woed up. Everybody's trying to give each other room. Big lock up. Oh, Seth Gruber locked him up here. Got a little bit too much rear brake. Gabe kind of got stuck into him. And unfortunately, Seth's going to go for a loop here. That's going to cost him the draft. Not a lot of damage, but unfortunately, some contact between he and the 88 truck. Um, so, yeah, like I said, that was my big concern was that pit road, pit road entry. And now these are the trucks that are going to go one extra lap. And we'll, we should see all these trucks in together. And then, of course, the next question is going to be, did everybody get onto pit road safely without any speeding penalties? As I'm watching the timing and the scoring so far, nobody's gotten past a lengthy, lengthy stop here. Um, but we'll keep an eye on that as it goes. But now we'll watch the second back. We suspect, yep, here they all come again. These trucks just getting so unsettled on entry. This one, oh, as I was about to say, everything looked a little bit better. But Kevin Hash there. Got into Ray Rittenauer. They both loop it around here. They're going to grab a gear and keep going. Um, so unfortunately, both times these trucks getting involved. And actually, no, there is a penalty. That's one of our championship contenders, the 88 of Gabe Butler. He's still sitting on pit road with a stop and hold. Um, Richard Sanchez on pit road as well. And so, yeah, so unfortunately, Gabe so far the first of those to kind of get the, get the penalty, I should say. 
Um, obviously, we, we mentioned Seth with his spin, as well as we just saw a moment ago, um, the the two trucks are the 87 and 03 also making contact. Um, so that's going to cost them a lot. So right now, this is the lead pack here of those that just pitted. Vicente is going to lead these guys that went the extra lap out of pit road. And we'll see how everybody starts to merge here. But right now I'm watching these two. Look at Kevin here. He's so low on the apron. This is going to be very difficult to hang it like he is. That truck's very loose there. Um, but he's going to be able to grab a, grab a gear and keep on going. But now we shoot off the back of Vicente. And I got to say, good job by, by Vicente here. He's going to get some help here in just a moment by Richard Sanchez. He's that gold truck coming up in the background. And these guys may be able to hang on to the point in this one. So really good job. And this is now a strategy call now as well for, for Rick here. This might be worth taking the... Oh, he's before you have a chance to take the gamble. Look at Austin Call. He's going to take the momentum straight to the top. Austin's going to take the point in this race. Or will he actually? The momentum starting to shift right back there. And at the line, I think Vicente got the lead back again. As there goes Brian Wing and Cody Nagels. They're going to jump to the top. But what I was going to be watching was that five truck. If he could jump in front of the leaders, that could put him on the tail end of the lead lap, which would be a great opportunity for him. As you see in the background there, Gabe Butler, um, or in the foreground, I should say, Gabe about to get swallowed up by these guys. That's going to put Gabe also potentially in a lap down position. And that's going to be a big fight now between he and the, the five of Richard Sanchez for them to fight for that lucky dog. Um, watching Jim Brooks right now, he again, he had that, that incident that didn't bring out a yellow. As there goes Richard, he's actually going to jump to the top here. A little surprised by this. I kind of thought Richard would stay more aggressive here to try to hold that spot. Um, but So we'll keep an eye on he and Gabe. And like I said, this is going to be the lucky dog battle. And actually, they're going to work together here. Not at all. If you tell me, if you gave me some options, this would not have been any of the options I had chosen. Really didn't expect to see the, the five pick up the 88 like that. Because again, this is the lucky dog battle between the two of these trucks here. So after it's all said and done here, we have a 10 truck breakaway um, from Vicente Guerrero back to Bud Steele, Ryan Decker. And then about 1.7 seconds back, but closing, um, Corey Buzzkirk, Bob Fitzgerald, and Eric Laurie. And then unfortunately, um, some of those trucks that lost the main pack here, including right here, Jason Bogart kind of rolling solo. Uh, Raymond right now, he's got some help here with Kevin Hash and Ambrose Nabel. As I say that, though, Kevin Hash around. He's going to try to hang on to it so far. Again, he's off the racing surface. We stay green. He's going to grab a gear and try to get back going here. Uh, so those tires will be hot, So, but looks like all's going to be okay on this for the moment. But that said, there was definitely a handful of trucks that would have loved to see that yellow there because we have, like I said, three trucks they lapped down. But it looks like he's going to keep grabbing gear and going. I'm going to go back here and take a look, see what happened here to Kevin Hash. That truck just stepped on entry. Let's watch one more time. Oh, caught the apron on entry right behind Raymond Rittenauer. And then just bouncing off the apron. Just That's all he could do to hang on to it. So um, we'll jump back live here as Vicente Guerrero continues to lead. So unfortunately, a couple incidents could have, should have brought yellows out. But so far, no cautions as of yet. Um, like I mentioned, though, right now we've got about the 10 trucks here all packed in together. Uh, two lap down trucks right there, Lockstern, the 88, and the 5. And then still trying to get their way back up there. These these four trucks here um, being led right now by the 18 of Brandon Briggs. Uh, and then you got Corey Buskirk, Bob Fitzgerald, Eric Laurie. Um, but unfortunately, I'm looking at the lap times. It's starting just to go the wrong way. So we'll, we'll keep an eye, but you can see the separation there. You can see the smoke there as well from that incident that we saw that spin from the 03. However, we, again, we still stay green as Brandon Briggs actually just hitting pit roads. That's going to unfortunately shrink that truck down to three now instead of the four that they had. Um, however, let's say he was, that was his schedule stop. He had to come in that time around. So we'll keep an eye on him. And we got to go a little further back, unfortunately. Say with We saw what happened to the 32. It uh, looks like Patrick went ahead and made sure he picked him up. So, again, some some just great teamwork from, teamwork from the brothers. Uh, right now, just about a half a lap down. But we'll jump back up front because right now, Jacob Lee trying to take the point in that number 21 truck. Because he's got Brian Wing, Kevin Freeze on the inside. And that's the issue on the outside line. If you miss that entry, um, there's going to be somebody wanting to take advantage of it. Oh, my goodness. You saw the 48 there. He jumped to the inside as soon as he had the opening. 
And it was looking so good for Jacob. And now all of a sudden he just lost all his help here. Now he's going to get some help from Gabe um, as well as Richard. But like I said, he was going for the lead there and just one little bobble from a pusher. And that's dropped him now back to seventh here. See, the leader's about to catch the 51 and 03. Uh, that would now add the 03 to the lap down truck list as well. I uh, would put the 51 two laps down. Um, so again, the 51 can probably go to about lap 33. So he's going to have to probably pin about five, six more laps roughly. So um, like I said, he's hoping that, that there would be a yellow that isn't involving him before they get to him. Um, but right now it's not looking likely to see Kevin Hash there. Uh, he just got um, put down a lap. However, the other concern is I don't know if he's going to be able to hang on to that draft. Here you see Jim, same thing. He's just going to go to the top, let them swing on by. Unfortunately, that puts him now two down in that 51. And now these guys are starting to settle in a little bit here once more as it looks like the field is starting to kind of just get that single file look here for the moment. So right now on the championship side of things, uh, I say Kevin Freeze is a playoff truck. However, he's missed a couple of the playoff races. So I uh, say he's unfortunately kind of in, I think, in the 16th spot in the points. I uh, say Brian Wing not in the playoffs with his part-time schedule, wasn't able to qualify. Um, so really right now, Cody Nagels and Ryan Decker are the highest up of the running order, those that are in the playoffs. Um, they again got two non-playoff drivers there, uh, Austin called Jack Walls. So... Um, right now, like I said, the championship battle definitely really split up here a little bit. Uh, we mentioned, obviously, the for Jacob Lee again wanting to, to kind of be put himself in a good spot as Austin Call may have caught the apron there in the entry. You saw how quick that truck jumped to the outside line. That's the danger of, of virusing Super Speedway. That's also really turn three is, seems to be the, the more dangerous spot of the turns between one and three. Even though this track, I believe, is pretty much symmetrical, for whatever reason, just turn three is, is kind of the, the danger turn on entry, especially on that bottom. But again, though, Jacob, our points leader, entering tonight. So, again, he's going to want to try to get all he can here. Uh, so, again, I believe did get a lap uh, lap lead, so bonus point for the 21 truck there. Um, also was the one one of the trucks that pitted on lap number 20 along with Kevin Freeze. So, right now, they're, they are burning a little extra fuel. And, again, with the pack being a little shrunk now, it may not be worth the gamble of trying to run that extra lap. They might need a pit in this big 10 plus truck group. So I want to keep an eye on and kind of see what the strategy is there for them. Uh, unfortunately, you do see in the background though, Jim Brooks has fallen off the back of that pack. He was trying to hang on to the draft, just wasn't quite able to here. So he's going to start to fall into the clutches of uh, Corey Buskirk, Eric Glory, and Bob Fitzgerald, who sit about eight seconds back off of Nick Wing. As again, like I said, right now, things just kind of. I want to call it calm, but it's about the calmest it's been so far tonight. So just a few more laps. We will hit the halfway point in this race, starting lap number 32 of the scheduled 70. And again, pit windows should be roughly, again, if they kind of keep that number consistent, should be basically from around lap 38 to 40, uh, depending on, how, like again, how hard some of these drivers are pushing. Kevin pitted a lap 20 last time around, so I would expect to see him, even though well, I, I say I would expect to see him maybe around, aim for the 40. However, he's been leading this whole a lot of this run here, so... He's going to be getting probably about the worst fuel mileage of any of these trucks right now. Um, the ones that are probably doing really good on fuel is this guy right here, Vicente Guerrero, Austin Call. These guys have been kind of just cruising here on the inside line. So I like what those two have because, again, that'll give them a little bit more fuel mileage. And even if they don't go the extra lap, that'll shorten their pit stop because they won't have to put quite as much fuel in these trucks. As again, with this track, as fast as they go, they, this, these definitely burn a lot more fuel um, than a Daytona, Talladega, or Atlanta. So it also opens up some, some strategies and potentials for kind of maybe a slightly short pit stop could actually go a long way here.
Right now, Kevin Freeze continues to lead the way over Ryan Wang. Brian Wang. I'll, I'll, I won't forget the B. Apologies, Brian. Um, you see Cody Nagels. He's been able to kind of solidify himself there into that third spot. These The first three trucks running single file. Then it goes double file with that 30. Um, sorry, the 21 and the 48, Ryan Decker and Jacob Lee. And again, eventually what we're going to probably see is though at some point that's, that second lane is going to have to find their way back to the bottom here. They've got about probably about five more laps before they absolutely have to. Um, again, though, as you, you want to be greedy as a driver and say the, the further up you can make it onto pit or up in the field before you have to hit pit road, the better. And so, like I said, I think that's right now part of Jacob's goal is to see if he can maybe kind of push himself a little bit further up. Um, but right now, everybody's kind of pretty pretty mellow right now. Jim Brooks has just hit pit road. Again, I think that's a scheduled stop for him with his um, with the issues he had earlier. Um, and so we'll, let's say we'll keep an eye and see. But unfortunately, like I said just not the night he's looking for early on. Same thing for a few of these other trucks early on here. Right now, like I said, oh man, big move by Jacob Lee. They're just able to squeeze in front of Jack Walls. Again, these guys, again, they need to try to find their, their way in to, to be ready for those pit stop because you don't want to get caught off guard as we just crossed the halfway point here, starting lap number 36. And so now, again, the two to watch are, are these two trucks now here on the outside. They are in the same boat, though. They both will have to pit at the same time as leaders. But these are the two trucks right now on the outside that are one lap down as we run. Um, and they've got plenty of wiggle room over the other trucks here. As the other trucks that are a lap or more down are, are Jim Brooks at three down, Brandon Briggs four down. And I think, unfortunately, Raymond Rittenauer, Kevin Hash have retired from the event. So right now that leaves us 21 trucks on track, 17 of which still on the lead lap. Yeah, so right now it's all about kind of when do we see the trucks blink um, onto pit road. Like, I, again, I think they can go about I, – I don't think they're coming this time. I think next time I expect to see a good chunk of them on, on pit road. Um, also saw the Groover brothers there coming out of the turn. Like I said they just got the two of them right now, so they are only able to run the 48 sixes. This big pack here running in the 46 80s. So, yeah, so they – again, same thing. A lot of these trucks are going to need some help here. You never, again, you never want to hope for Ela, but there's some cases where it would go really well for, for your race for, for something to happen. And it looks like what's going to probably happen is pretty much these guys are going to get to them right as that pit stop window is going to open. And now they have to make that decision of do they want to try to play a little bit of defense here? I mean, because they have the option. They can run the bottom lane and make the leaders go around the top, or they can jump to the top and then try to cycle back in here to the back. But again, being so close to pit stop time, I think they might hug the bottom, and that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to stay, kind of protect the inside line there. And you see Seth going down to the apron there, and I think that was just maybe, I'll say these trucks are going to get a little edgy from time to time, but this is also that Lucky Dog battle because right now that puts Patrick in the Lucky Dog spot, um, Seth in the second Lucky Dog spot, and now these trucks are really trying to figure out. I think some of these guys are going to pit. I think some want to pit. This is going to really shake things up. Actually, no, no. Oh, a couple takers, actually. And that's going to be, yeah, it's going to be Patrick Seth. So that's actually, it makes perfect sense. They had to get down, stay on the bottom, because if they didn't, they weren't going to be able to make pit road. So that makes complete sense there for those two. Um, so again, that unfortunately puts them a lap down. Also further back, Eric Lurie, Corey Buskirk, and Bob Fitzgerald, they're all on pit road together. And I think that's, again, these smaller packs have had to just push harder. So that's going to burn a little bit more fuel for them, and whereas this bigger pack, some drivers have, have have been able to save fuel, and so that's what's allowed them to go that little bit further. But I think based on that, seeing when those guys all hit road, I would expect to see um, pretty much I would say this this whole ten truck pack here. Um, I would expect to see all of these guys hit road this time by. And yet here comes a giant pack of trucks, and now no mistakes is the goal. Oh, man, Ryan Decker had a big slide there. Hopefully got down to speed and time. So far, no contact. But again, this is only half the fight here. The next job these trucks have to do is they got to make sure that they find their pit stalls here and not get into one another. So this is a really tricky spot to be in for a lot of these guys as well.
And so far looks like pretty good in, ins and outs. You see the 04 truck rolling out of pit road now. Here come some of the other driver, drivers that just finished their service. They're starting to get down and away. And it looks like... I think Brian Wang's going to be the quickest out of pit road. Jacob Lee right behind him. Then Kevin Freeze. But it looks like for the most part, I think everybody's going to hold station together. We'll have to wait for everybody to build up speed to double check it. Um, but right now, like I said, we'll, we'll focus off the back of Brian here. As you see, there goes the 18 truck. Brandon Briggs again. He's right now a couple laps down. Oh, sock one truck drifted way wide there in the exit. Not sure who that was there, but that's going to be a potential for a pit stop penalty. A little nervous about that one. You see Kevin Freeze here is going to pick up the drafts. They're going to get locked on together. Don't think it's enough for a breakaway yet, but we'll, we'll wait and see. Like I said, right now, um, Cody's going to pick these guys up as well. And then you got Ryan Decker is going to lead that next field here. So they like said, I'm going to make sure we're going to watch, see if anybody ducks back onto pit lane, because I saw one, at least one pit exit that looked a little, a little nervous there, how quick they jumped to that second lane. Um, but what I also see in the background, the Gruber brothers are starting to try to really push their way to get back into this main pack. Because again, they need to fight for this Lucky Dog battle as well, the 54, the 32. They're going to need to go to battle with that 88 and the 5 to try to be that first truck one down. As unfortunately, you just saw Ambrose Nabel, he got put down a lap. So he's going to also be added to that mix right now. As at the moment, it's Gabe Butler, the farthest up of the trucks to lap down for the Lucky Dog battle. And then unfortunately, I think there's a little bit of a connection hiccup once more for Patrick as I don't see him on track again once more. Unfortunately, that's the exact opposite of what we were hoping for from 32. And that's the worry. I thought I saw someone drift up early on the pit exit. It was Vicente, I believe. He, I think he got up too high, unsafe pit exit. So unfortunately, he's going to have to serve a penalty here. I believe it may be a drive through, not a stop and hold. So, um, But again, that's just one more truck. Now that brings us from the 10 link lap trucks down to nine as we're 29 to go here again fuel window about 20 laps so basically in about 9 10 laps here these trucks could make their final scheduled stop so to keep an eye on that as right now gabe is just doing all he can to stay in that lucky dog position here as again now he's going to have to a couple trucks to battle there with the, the uh, five truck potentially the 10 truck here if he can hold this draft as well and yeah we're just this field is starting to just little by little split up here as I believe also a couple trucks that fell off this main pack are these two here, Jack Walls and Nick Wing, um, as they're going to steal a little bit of draft here off the 18, but I just don't think they have the numbers, unfortunately. As actually, it does look like it's a stop and hold for Vicente, unfortunately, as he still sits on pit road. So we got to go even further back to Eric Laurie here, Corey Buskirk, Bob Fitzgerald. They've been pretty much lockstep after that first pit stop. They've stayed together here. And right now, these are the last three trucks on the lead lap here as they are about to enter turn number one. Leaders are entering turn number three and um, coming out of four. So they've got just over a straightaway ahead. But again, lap time-wise, though, that this pack here is definitely running quicker. Just again, just due to the sheer numbers that they've got. So again, you can kind of look at the timing and scoring. On the left side, you can see those trucks that are lead lap, lap down. You see Vicente rolling out of pit road now. So, I mean, look at all these trucks trapped lap down. You got Gabe, you got Richard, you got Jason, Ambrose, Seth. Um, then two laps down, now you got Vicente and Patrick. Uh, Jim, I believe, was three down. Brennan's five laps down. This is just, this has been a tough race for, um, for a lot of trucks here. Again, so far, caution free. We've had a couple incidents, just none to bring out a yellow. Um, we saw the first one with the 51, followed by the, the 03 there catching the, the apron entering turn three. But again, so far, caution free here as we 27 to go, 26 here at the line. And again, pit stop window. These guys can go another, so they can go to just about 10 to go, maybe a little over 10 to go. It will be interesting though, do we see any strategy from some trucks to maybe try to short pit, to maybe try to split up the field and maybe make it a race between themselves. You'll see in the background, Jim Brooks has been able to catch that pack. And it's probably not much of a consolation prize, but at the same time, it's nice to be able to run in the draft instead of running by yourself for a while because that's that's never a good time. Um, but, yeah, so unfortunately, like I said he, he had that earlier incident we saw on the exit of turn four, hit the inside wall a ton. 
um, then had to take a tow and get back on track. So um, a little bit further back, you see this pack has gotten bigger. Uh, you got Jack Walls leading Nick Wing. You've got the 18 there. The 10 truck is in there. Um, the 14 is trying to catch back up to them as well. This, if they can kind of get as many as they can, this would be probably their best hope here. Um, but last time by was a 46.71 for Brian to a 47.32 for Jack. So still about a little over half a second slower, unfortunately. And so, yeah, so I'm looking at the teams is kind of I'm, I'm trying to spy to see who who's where who's got who. I do see three Boonocker trucks all together there, the, the 05, the 25, and the 88. But again, though, for Gabe, I think he's got to go long. He's got to hope that if they short pit, he wants to stay out because, again, right now he wants to be that first truck one down, if not tail in the lead lap. I'm a little surprised. Again, I haven't. I really expect to see Gabe be a little more aggressive to try to get into that position um, to be the first truck one down. And same thing goes for Richard. I really thought Richard would push a little harder as well, um, but actually just wound up kind of grabbing, grabbing onto Gabe and just working with him. So um, again, those are kind of a couple things I didn't expect to see. But then I also see these three trucks here, the 48, the 6, and the 64. I believe these guys working together with the Roswell organization. So we could see them maybe try to pull a strategy call. They could bring Jim Brooks into that mix as well to have four trucks. But right now, like I said, it's probably just worth them just logging laps here. Um, saving fuel, shorten that final pit stop. That could be enough of a difference to, to maybe try to jump with the lead here at, at the last stage of this race here. But again, still plenty of time to go. 23 to go still. So again, they don't need a pit for another probably about just over 10 laps or so. But yeah, so so far... Um, name of the game has definitely been pit stops, though. Just um, some some miscues, some some contact, and that's unfortunately caught a couple a couple drivers off guard. So while we run single file, let's pull up our running order here. We got Brian Wang leading the way. Right behind him is Kevin Freeze in that number 25 machine. And in third, our points leader entering tonight, Jacob Lee. Fourth position is our pole sitter, Cody Nagels. Rounding at the top five is that 48 of Ryan Decker. Then in sixth position, you have Bud Steele there in that 40, or sorry, in the sixth truck. Uh, behind him, 64 of Austin Call. Those are the trucks in the lead lap in this main pack. Then we got to go back about six seconds back to Jack Wall sitting in eighth. Nick Wing in ninth. Those are the lead lap trucks in this second group. Then you got to go way back, unfortunately, now to Eric Loring Company um, in the 071 truck there in 10th. And then Corey Buskirk sitting in 11th. And then Bob Fitzgerald's currently the last truck on the lead lap here in the 12th spot. So right now, as things continue to run, like I said, we've still got seven trucks in this lead pack, all on the lead lap. Got a couple trucks in the pack that are a lap or so down, the 88s and the 5. But again, the, like I said, now it's kind of who blinks first, and then do we see a response from anybody else? But this track, very, very different to Daytona and Iris, or sorry, Daytona and Talladega, I should say. Um, this is a track here in Atlanta. It's very likely when you make a green flag pit stop, you will be trapped a lap down. So that makes that short pit strategy very, very um, risky. Whereas Daytona Talladega, you can usually pull off a pit stop and then come back out and stay on that lead lap. So a little less risky, almost was one of those ones that's really worth the gamble, I feel like. Um, but yeah, like I said, just unfortunately, that's just the way tonight's gone so far with some of the pit road miscues and things like that. It's, it's just really shuffled this pack up a ton. Um, also, again, also the five truck missing the grid. Again, not sure if it's a hardware issue or strategy call or what it was, but um, that's kind of put Richard, unfortunately, on uh, just kind of on the, the wrong foot right off the bat here and just hasn't had that caution that he was hoping for early on to, to be able to basically just jump back into the thick of this thing. So.
And yeah, I uh, say so, no. I couldn't wait for him any longer. I, I had to start this race because otherwise I was gonna get get in trouble from everybody else there. But um, glad to see you, Caitlin or Mama Groover. Yeah, I say it's. I'll. I was, I'm sure your boys will keep you up to date if uh, if anything happens. But hope you have a good evening. And then you can see up in the back or in the foreground there. These leaders are just getting into the window, starting to try to catch uh, Eric, Corey, and Bob. As again, they're coming through, turn, coming out of turn two. As leaders are about to enter turn number two, and lap time-wise, they were about about a second quicker, 46.88 to 47.70. Um, but now, like I said, now is is kind of now's the time where we'll see what the strategy call is here. Do we see any short stop, short pit takers, or does everybody are going to run this out to completion? Um, and then just maybe take the fuel they need to the end. Do they maybe plan on green white checkers, put a little extra fuel in? Because again, this is a big enough track. They do have to plug that second can of fuel into these trucks. So with that, if you can save enough fuel where you can maybe put one can in, that could save you three plus seconds, maybe even three to four seconds at least. And if you can get enough trucks to do the same strategy and to get on and off a of pit road together, that could be a race winning move. So again, it's a very big risk versus reward um, there again. And of course, with it being a four race playoff, the gambles are just that much more just expanded, if you will, um, because you don't have a lot of there's not a lot of recovery avail availability from it afterwards. So um, like I said this will be our third of the four playoff races. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Like I said, you've got Brian Wang, Kevin Freeze, teammates there. Um, you've got Gabe Butler again, who's right now the first truck one down. And yep, here we go. Actually, you're going to have the field actually all come in together. One truck did stay out there. Oh, Ryan Decker, just all sorts of wiggly on the brakes there, able to hang on to it. I saw one truck go long, though, and that was the five truck, but unfortunately completely by himself. But at the moment is on the lead or is now on the tail end of the lead lap. And now we watch all these trucks hit pit road. And so you get a good distance here. Now make sure everybody hits their pit stall. Cody with the big wiggle there. But looks like he is... Oh, is he in his pit stall? I can't tell. I feel like I see a little movement out of the six truck. Nope, looks like he's good to go. Got a little nervous there. I wasn't sure if he overshot it by just like a fraction of an inch or anything like that. But here they go. Look at Gabe, though. Gets a great in, in and out. He's going to actually get say now he's going to be the first truck and actually kind of the tail end. Or not... Oh, I'm, I'm mixing up paint schemes. Brian Wang, I apologize, the first one getting out of pit road there. However, we got a couple trucks that did not pit yet. That's going to now put the lead to Jack Walls and Nick Wing at the moment. As you just saw, Richard Sanchez now hitting pit road. But the problem for Richard was he went one lap by himself. That's going to be painful because that's going to be probably a couple seconds lost. I really don't know if he's going to have enough to be able to get back to the main pack. So right now though these are our two leaders here the 83 and the 28 this is the the next group of trucks here as well that have yet to hit pit road and i like the strategy by these guys because why not if we get a caution you're still in the lead lap you're, you're in a great spot here then you jump back to these trucks that just pitted they are good to the end and it looks like they're all going to hang on together here as well you got brian you got cody kevin all locked together then you got ryan gabe and austin and then jacob lee's just on the outside looking in but i think he's definitely close enough he should be able to pick him up and that's the difference of a lap by yourself so close for rick but won't be enough here he's gonna lose that pack and that's that's gonna be a tough pill to swallow for him unfortunately so again back to our lead lap trucks here again they can probably go another three or so laps here um, we're looking now at this lead pack of trucks that have made their final scheduled pit stop and it's, I say, now they're trying to work around the side. They're kind of trying to balance the traffic a little bit here because you got Brian, Cody, Kevin all together. Um, then you got Ryan there working with Gabe as well as Austin. But they have to try to work their way around some of those trucks that have yet to pit right there, like Eric Laurie we just mentioned. It's like a couple other trucks hitting pit road. That's going to be Seth, Patrick, and Ambrose coming in. Basically, that's that's as far as they could go. Um, again, here is Jack coming. Probably we'll see them very shortly as well. Um, again, they will lose the, the lead um, of that race when they make that final pit stop. 
as there comes Eric Loring Company. Let's say they're now making their schedule piss up. They went as far as they could. So that's going to cycle things now to these. Let's see, seven trucks. Oh, man. It so looked like a big jump to, by Jacob Lee to get to that inside line here as Austin Call is going to pick up Gabe Butler. Oh, a little bit of bump through turn. You always get a little nervous there. Um, but they got to make sure they don't fall back too far here because right now Jacob's about a half a second off of Ryan. Austin and Gabe are about half a second off of Jacob. They don't want to let these top four break away, so I'll have to keep a closer eye on that. As you see the field here, let's say there's those guys that just made their pit stop. It was a quick stop by Nick Wing, but again, though, just unfortunately, not enough time to to be able to to be able to get back onto the pack of them. But like I said, doing the best he can with what he has at the moment. Um, and yeah, unfortunately, I'll say it's it's a tough tough spot to be in. But now this is gonna get a little nervous here. You say those guys just left pit road, so we got a huge range of speed difference here. As so far, so good. You can see how quickly and aggressively all these guys are trying to get back to the bottom. Um, and it looks like all the lead lap trucks will. But now, yeah, saying this is where there going to have to be a little bit more teamwork here because Gabe now at risk here losing this main pack because look at Corey Buskirk. He's going to actually stop, be able to drop to the inside there. He's going to be sniffing the draft off the leaders. And right now, Corey actually now sitting as the first truck one down. But the concern I have right now is they're starting to lose that gap off of Austin Call. They got to make sure they get reorganized and just start to push real aggressive here. Because like I said, they, they got to make sure that they stay in this main pack to have a chance here to try to get those laps back. As right now, now you got four trucks here all together. All these trucks trapped one lap down the 998, the 88, the 071, and the uh, 08. But again, on the lead lap in this lead pack, we're down to six trucks here. Brian Wing, Cody Nagels, Kevin Fries, Ryan Decker, Jacob Lee, and Austin Call. As we are now down to 10 to go. Again, from here, I believe everybody has made their final schedule. Pits up should be good to the end. Green White Checkers, of course, could throw a big wrench into some of these drivers' plans, but now it's finding your friends. What's the plan here? So, again, Brian Wing not in the playoffs. Cody Nagels is in the playoffs and in a great spot, but you look right behind Cody, that's a teammate of Brian Wings. So I would expect to see if Cody tries to make a move, I would suspect you'll see Kevin stick with him. And again, these guys probably know who's wearing the points um, with everything and say for those that may not be aware, we'll pull up real quick on the side. You see Jacob Lee, Cody Nagels, Gabe Butler, Richard Sanchez, and Ryan Decker. So we've got three of those guys in this top five here. Unfortunately, we said the 5 and the 88 have not had the nights that they've been hoping for here. Um, 88 is currently sitting in 11th, the 5 truck in 15th. So for for Jacob here in the 21, again, leading coming into tonight. So he's got, he, he basically has to keep his eye on Ryan. He's got to keep his eye on Cody and to see what what's the best approach for him to minimize, kind of min maybe minimize the damage or try to make a move and, and hope that he gets some help here. It's going to be interesting. And you can see there that Gabe and company, they have caught back up to that main pack. So right now, Gabe back to sitting as the first truck one lap down. Uh, about to catch the Groover brothers, unfortunately. So I believe they are going to just put them two laps down as they run. But like I said, I think right now, now it's kind of a bit of a chess match. Like I said, it's who do you want to work with? Who do you trust? Um, I'm looking again, looking at some of these trucks and seeing who maybe they have some, some associations with. Like I mentioned, Brian and Kevin, I expect to see those two try to work together if they can. Gabe could definitely be in that mix. Eric Laurie as well. I believe Austin Call, Ryan Decker. Um, I expect to see the 6448 work together if they can. I'm not sure if Jacob Lee's got any formal teammates or not, or if he's just going to try to work with anybody and everybody. Um, but it, like I said, I mean, we've we've heard it time and time again. Gabe Butler always always tells you, I mean, you're only as good as the people you work with, and. It's, I mean, that's that's part of the super speedway racing is you, you got to try to have some teammates, some friends, whatever it may be. 
um, to be able to have a chance in these things. So you see the Gruber brothers, they're going to jump top. Again, they could play a role in this too. If they have some in to say, you know what, I want to work with this guy. Let's see if we can maybe make something happen too. So do we see Seth and Patrick maybe try to maybe push one of the, the other guys that are having a chance for this championship and this lead battle, try to win this race or get max points. So there's a lot on the line here as so we're going to be coming around six to go. Right now, you can see, I mean, Brian's been enjoying this lead here for a while. You just, again, you know, I feel like at this point, if you're Brian, something's going to happen. But you just don't know when or where. And again, I think if you're this lead pack here, you don't want to bring the field back into this mix. So I think you probably want to wait till the white flag lap is right now. There's only nine trucks on this lead lap here. And there's, again, only six trucks in this main pack. So... If you can fight six trucks instead of having to fight 10 trucks, that's that's going to be the preferred option for, for a lot of these drivers here. So, like I said, I, I think the move will probably be, if things stay like they are, I really think out of turn four will be where Cody tries to make a move. I think, though, if you're Ryan or Jacob or Austin, if you want to try to make a move, you probably got to come and start making that move out of turn number two. I think that's going to be the time to try to jump to that outside, get that big momentum shift. Um, and see what you can do but like i said this is where th there's probably some dealings going on in the background in discord that we don't get to hear unfortunately uh, you see bud Steele, he's going to jump to the top there in the six truck he's going to get trapped a lap down now here shortly could bud have some some help again he does have some drivers he could work with he could work with a ryan decker or or an austin calls as soon as they said look at austin i think he got a big push there and jumped to the top gabe said i'm going to slot right back in here beside behind that 21 truck now Austin's going to get trapped on that outside line. So we'll see if he's going to have any friends. You see, I think the 48 Ryan Decker is going to try to pick him up here. But again, they need some more trucks to make something happen here. We'll see if Bud can tag onto the back of him or not. So right now they are the first two to blink here. That's going to be the 4864. Can they find some more help here? They're going to need some more numbers. I do see Gabe Butler jumping to the top. I didn't really think he would. I thought he would stay on the inside line um, just to kind of protect himself a bit. But right now, though, Ryan Decker, he's gotten alongside of that six truck of Cody Nagels. This would be for the second spot as they currently run. Again, we still got plenty of time to go here. Still four laps to go as 64 just all over the rear deck lid of that 48. As they're going to cross line here, heading to three to go. And I think these guys started to get a little antsier than I thought they would as Ryan Decker is going to try to get that big push here heading into one. So now I think you're going to start to see that shuffling around here. Watch to see as someone's going to probably, if they can clear and see the momentum shift, we might see them jump to the outside line and say, yep, this is what we got to do to try to have my chance to get that big push to get to the front. You see Bud Steele, he's gotten back to this group, so he will be in this pack as well. He could play a role in this as well. Also wants to go for that lucky dog battle as well in case it, we get, before we get to the white, if he can get in front of Gabe. Right now, Gabe still is our lucky dog truck. But right now, Corey Buzzkirk going for it in that 998. But right now, the numbers just on the inside line seems like that's the stronger lane at the moment, though. Coming to two to go here. Right now, with everything's going on now, Corey Buzzkirk currently sitting as our lucky dog truck in that 998. And again, every point's going to matter. So if Gabe can finish ninth instead of tenth, he's going to want to do so. But right now, again, we still have to watch this battle for the lead. As right now, they kind of have fallen back just a tiny bit, but they just haven't got the the third, fourth trucks that they need. I think on the outside line to have that big surge. But we'll see if they come to the white. Will we see Gabe try to latch on here? A little bit of a push here. Everybody's trying to, now they got to first get to the line before this thing is official. Now they are there. So now, oh, a little bit of a connection. Hiccup, there's a contact. White flag's out though. So they will race it back here. Unfortunately, a little bit of a connection issue for um, the six truck of Cody Nagels. That's going to get him involved in that incident. And now it's basically who can hold on to the finish here. Ryan Decker's got help from the 64 of Austin Call. Right now, Ryan's got a nose ahead, but now everybody's going to start to jump around for position here. 
Like I said, there's still a lot of time to go here. They're going to have to figure out where to position their trucks here to have their best chance to win this race. As Ryan's going to jump to the inside, Austin's going to follow. Austin's going to play protect. Oh, contact between the three of them. Oh, big contact there out of turn three and four. That's going to now make the shuffle back to the front here. More contact, more trucks jumping around here, making contact at the line. Kevin Free is going to get the win after all is said and done. Oh, my goodness. We're going to have to wait and see. Oh, man, still trucks wrecking after the finish there. Oh, this is going to be a heartbreaker for a number of drivers here, and I know definitely one pers person watching as well. But let's start off here. This is the first part that happened. Watch the six truck here. There he goes. He disappears. There's not much you can do here. And then as soon as he reappears, there's there's the contact. There's just there's nothing you can do when, when a connection issue happens like that when you're just straight in the middle of the pack. Oh, so that's that's what sends the six truck around. And then everybody starts to kind of head through the turn. Um, right now you see it there in the distance there you see the 48. You see the 64. They are in line here. They're looking good. But then I think just, I don't know if it's, I want to say indecision, but just they had to kind of choose a line to be in and they do get to the bottom here in three. Put down right now as they enter turn three. And you see the 48 Ryan Decker, he gets to the bottom, the 64 gets to the bottom as well, but then they kind of aren't able to hold the bottom as well as they want to. Look at the momentum the 05 and the 25 have, and that's where there's initial contact. I think that the contact surges the 48, or sorry, 64 into the 48. Unfortunately, Ryan goes around there. And then at this point, just everybody's just trying to hang on to their trucks here. You see the 48, the 88, they go around. And now Brian Wang at the moment is at the point. And man, I say now it's the dash to the finish here. And then this is again, everybody's still trying to see if they can win this race here. You see the 64, he tries to squeeze as tight as he can on the inside line. A little bit of contact between them. Then the oh, 05 and the 64, they get hooked together. Brian somehow hangs on to that car. Austin goes up into the outside wall. And then it's the dash to the start-finish line here. As, And then right now you see, here's our top two. As saying, at the line, here's where Kevin comes across. And that's the distance right there. Kevin over Brian. But you see all these trucks behind? Those aren't the trucks that are going for the, the results there. Look at, there's Jacob Lee down to the inside. He's going to grab third. Austin Call there fourth. And then even with all that damage, Ryan Decker's still going to bring home a top five. But uh, it's going to be a what could have been for a lot of these drivers here tonight, unfortunately. All right. So with all of that said and done, let's go ahead and pull up our final results before we get to our interviews. As is going to be Kevin Freeze over Brian Wang by one hundredth of a second, then Jacob Lee, Austin Call, Ryan Decker. Uh, then, unfortunately, saw saw those incidents there on those last couple laps. Nick Wing was able to get around Cody Nagels. He jumps to sixth. Cody seventh. Uh, Jack Walls eighth. We mentioned uh, Corey Buskirk was able to kind of get the best of those at the end. He's able to get a top ten and ninth, but still top ten. And then just oh my goodness, just the way the tonight was just so hectic. Uh, Eric Laurie, Bob Fitzgerald, Gabe Butler winds up falling to 13th. Jason Bogart, Richard Sanchez, 14th, 15th. Uh, Seth Gruber in 16th. As we continue down the uh, Ambrose Nables, 17th, Vicente Guerrero, Patrick Gruber, Jim Brooks, and then unfortunately some early retirements for, for Brandon Briggs, Raymond Rittenauer, and Kevin Hash. All right, with that, we're going to pull up some drivers here because that was something. I, I just, yeah, I, man, that's one of the crazier finishes that I've seen. And it looked like you, you we knew it was going to happen. Then we had no idea what was going to happen there. Um, let's pull up our third place finisher, though, at the moment. That is going to be that 21 of Jacob Lee. So let's grab Jacob in over here. And I thought everybody was going to wait till the one to go and then make the moves. It kicked off a little earlier than that, Jacob. And then at that point, it was just try to... I mean, there was a lot that happened. Obviously, the, what kicked off was that connection issue we saw, which you kind of got a little piece of. And then, I don't know, man. It was just, 
it got a little crazy at the end and like initially it looked like you're going to be in a really great spot then you got caught up in in that and then somehow with all the other stuff that went on you still to to bring it home in third i mean we'd go caution free a couple incidents that weren't huge that could have brought out yellows but i don't think they were big enough in this situation but just i mean take us through the race and then take us through that dash to the finish yeah, overall, I mean, I think we had a really good race. Uh, pit strategies were on point. Our, our pit crew was incredible tonight, um, and uh, everything was spot on. I mean, uh, it, it seemed like a, a great race overall. I was like caution free. I mean, that was that was pretty cool to see. Um, so, I mean, it was just it was a lot of fun out here tonight. Just uh, I, I mean, I just. I don't have anybody that works with me out here, unfortunately. You know, I'm <laughs> I'm the Lone Ranger, so I got to just kind of tuck in where I can and try to make best of my position. Um, we had a 0x all the way throughout the whole entire race, so we were looking really good. And then right there at the end, you saw we got collected. So that stinks. I was really looking forward to getting that those extra bonus points for a 0x. That have been huge for us um, sitting P, P1 in the uh, playoff standings. I'm super pumped about that still. Um, I'll see where we end after this race. But – yeah, right there at the end, it was pretty scary. Um, I just kind of stayed in it, had that truck blink in front of us. Um, I actually went right through the truck that blinked because uh, it blinked again when it went through me. Um, and then there at the end, another one turned sideways, and I collected that, which bent my axle. Uh, but we were able to keep it straight, um, which was nice. Um, and then at the end, <laughs> the reason I went so low at the start finish line there is because uh, that uh, one that truck that was up top on the wall, and he started coming down heavily, and I didn't know where to go. Um, I didn't want to run in the back of them, so uh, that was my only choice. But uh, overall, I, like I said, I, I think it was a great, uh, a great race here for this number 21 import logic machine, and uh, I'm super, super excited to see what we can do over in Talladega for sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm saying, like you said, obviously the points will be the crucial one. I say it looks like already, looks like they've already actually popped up. So I'll say it looks like at the moment, so five point lead over Cody, eight points over Ryan. Um, I mean, but let's say Gabe's only. 13 out, 18 out to Richard. So, yeah, I mean, there's still obviously a lot that could happen. So, yeah, so you might need to spend this week on, on trying to send some send some feelers out to, to get some love here at the end to to try to get some some help for that, for that finale. Because, I mean, again, just you've been, like I said, you've been kind of rolling solo, but they've done an amazing job with it um, for this playoffs, man. So, um, yeah, like I said, got three down, one more to go. So um, before we let you go, though, we definitely want to give you any, uh, any thanks to Chats for that, for that um, third place tonight. Yeah, I just want to say I hate it for Jason and Rick early on. They got caught up in some mess. Usually they work, we all work together, um, and we usually do a pretty good job together, but they got caught up a little early, which kind of sucks on that part. But, yeah, man, I got to get a huge shout-out to Highlighter Bros, uh, just the, their sponsorship behind the whole entire team and uh, allowing me to be such a, a co-owner of such a great team. Uh, definitely got a shout out to uh, Import Logic, which is, of course, one of the sponsors here tonight as well. Uh, but they are out of the Tyler, Texas area and any any vehicles that are import um, they work on and uh, make them look even better. So uh, last not least, I got to thank, uh, of course, the best fuel man in the business, Hondo Longmire. He did a great job at filling up my truck tonight. And uh, thank you, 40 Race Racewear. If you're listening out there, just know I'm coming for those shoes. And I hope I can uh, end up with them. That would be cool. And, of course, thank you guys over at Area 51 for all you do. Uh, thank you, Green White Checker TV. You always do an incredible broadcast, and I'm super pumped to uh, bring it in next week and for the grand finale, and hopefully we can finish this thing off, and uh, it would be awesome. So it's going to be it's gonna be fun at the end. I uh, hope everybody listening tunes in next week, and uh, it's the biggest show we ever had, and I hope we put on one heck of a show for everybody out there. Yeah, man. Good luck. Like I say, great job tonight, and good luck the rest of the way. Yeah, I appreciate you. All right, that is our third place finisher. Now we could jump to our runner up, and it was looking really good there until the absolute last stretch with with all the chaos going on there. And Brian, I mean, you were I say I haven't looked at the laps led, but you were leading a lot of laps, and I say we're watching you do a little bit of dirt track in there to hang on to that truck. And I kind of thought the moves would happen towards the end. I wasn't sure if Cody was gonna maybe try to make a move, but I was like, okay, well, he's got Kevin right behind him. So it's probably a good option for you. And then just everything broke loose with, with after the white came out, obviously the, the connection issue with, um, unfortunately we saw that between, between you and Kevin. And that really kind of just seemed like, seemed like it just kind of threw a giant wrench into, to everything at the end where it's like everybody had their game plan. Then that happens. And it's like, Oh crap. What now? And then things just got hectic there. I mean, take us through it. Cause like I said, you were 
you were pretty content to look like to just kind of control that that lead and the inside line and everything and and then i say to wind up only a hundredth off after everything you went through there i mean take us through it man uh yeah uh well Cody, yeah he was content on pushing me uh so yeah i really appreciate him uh just being content in second and uh but yeah on the start of the white flag lap um he had connection issues obviously and that uh slowed us down on the in the inside lane and left it left just kevin and i basically and uh yeah the outside line had a huge run and uh yeah in three and four uh it looked initially like call and decker weren't going to come down and so that's why i kept my foot in it obviously and yeah once they did come down i gave a solid bump to austin and then ryan was also late to come down uh in four so it was a five mile per hour speed difference so yeah, yeah it there, was kind of inev- inevitable there with the huge speed difference yeah no and that was the thing is that yeah you could see like i said and like i said it's 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 it seemed like like i said there's almost like maybe even indecision of like okay do we want to be top do we want or do we be middle bottom whatever and then like i said like as you're already you're kind of surging forward and then but let's say this is a track where especially in the white flag you like you can't really check up that quickly obviously because otherwise you're gonna wind up in that same situation and then you're right though i mean once you guys made um got connected it was just like a huge surge of speed that you could even you could visibly see it so um yeah it was i mean it was wild to say you you kind of made a habit now of, of starting in the back and working way to the front and then being in the contention of these things obviously it didn't take you very long on this one to get up front early and then it was just it seemed like it was just minimizing mistakes. As I say we unfortunately saw a lot of mistakes on pit entry, um, some pit penalties, some contact, unfortunately, and just it seemed like that really kind of just shook up the whole the whole race tonight. Yeah, there ended up being a ton of lap down cars, including Gabe on the uh, the first pit stop, unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, it was pretty a pretty small group uh, towards the final pit stops. Yeah, and no, I was, it was yeah, it was it was eventful to to say the least, man. But like I said, um, I'll say you're you're showing showing off for the the non playoff guys. Like I said, a, a really good job tonight. Um, and definitely want to give you the floor for for any thanks to Chaz for that runner up tonight here. Yeah, uh, thanks to Cody. Uh, I appreciate him being content, uh, pushing me. Uh, congrats to Kevin on the win. Uh, thanks to you guys uh, for broadcasting, and thanks to Gabe and Eric. I'll say good job tonight, Brian. Like I said, didn't quite turn out how you're hoping for, but as like I said, I mean, still a good result. And I'll say got one more to go, and we'll we'll see how how the points shake out for your teammates. And uh, it should be fun to see see what you're able to do if you're if you're able to make it to see if you can maybe help one of them grab it. So good luck the rest of the way, man. Thank you. All right, that leaves us one driver left to chat with. And say, like I said, he was kind of in the in the thick of it from from that final lap because he was behind that truck that disappeared and then got hooked up with the teammate. And ah, man, Kevin, that was I mean, we're we're watching kind of all the the side drafting, the the bumping, and I say what was crazy about it too was you see all these trucks behind you. It's like okay, there's there's first second, then you got to go about four trucks back to even get to third place. But I mean. Take us through yeah. the the strategy there at the end, man. Because like I said, you were you were in a good little pocket. Um, let's say just talking to Brian sounds like you all three of you were pretty content and on just trying to work together to to get the best results for the three of you. Um, and then like I said, just unfortunately the a little bit of the downside of of sim racing, a little connection hiccup, and just seemed like that kind of just threw everything out of the plan. And then it was just like recover mode almost to to try to get the best you guys could. Which I mean, obviously you and Brian did a great job of recovering for, but obviously took a lot of work on that final lap. Yeah, I, I, that was, seems that uh, Cody's internet likes to blink out at the most inopportune times, like right there. Um, but I, yeah, I was happy just uh, chilling in line, pushing around and um, fishing, finishing wherever uh, it worked out to be. Um, I don't want to come in and, do anything stupid that's going to screw up somebody else's race just why there at the end i mean i'm i'm pushing brian and i i couldn't you, you can't see squat with what's happening and then he suddenly like tried to check up in the middle of the corner a little bit but i mean 
at that point I can't see anything. And it was so fast that I, I just gave him that tap and looking at the replay, maybe, uh, Ryan was a little late getting down, but, um, yeah, I was, I was hoping to push Brian and Cody there and see if we could get the one, two, three. I know the bottom is quite difficult to work, uh, um, on that last lap because of the corn, the runs that the top trucks just get out of the corner, especially out of turn four is so much bigger, which is also why I was surprised that they came down. Cause if you have that middle lane locked up, you're normally in a really good spot to carry that run away. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty eventful race in terms of the pit road sequences. Uh, yeah. Luckily, I was able to uh, stay out of it, but I don't think everybody uh, can say the same on that one. No, I said we definitely saw. I think I think on all the, the sequences there was something that happened, be it be it contact. Like obviously, we saw that unfortunately with Gabe that that kind of cost him right off the bat. Um, then we saw yeah some some pit road miscues on pit exit. I think that caught the fourteen truck and. There was, yeah, there, I mean, because there, there wasn't any, like, big incidents that maybe could have, should have brought. I think there's only two things I saw on track. One, the 51 um, trucking the inside wall out of four. And then there was a spin in three with um, the 03 truck. But there was nobody around. So, say, like, iRacing's like, yeah, we're, we're good to go. Keep going. Yeah. So, nothing nothing crazy where, where you kind of have those question marks. But, yeah, no, like I said, it was it was eventful time. And, and yeah, I mean, Pit Road was definitely the, the name of the game of just minimizing those mistakes. And, like I said, you know, it gradually, like I said, every time you'd lose maybe a truck or two or whatever it was just from just either a mistake on entry or exit or whatever to then at the end there you had, I think it was the six of you, I want to say, um, mm -hmm. before before everything got kind of, then it was just, yeah, and then it was just kind of figure out the strategies there. So, um, yeah, it, like I said, it was it was eventful for sure. But like I said, you guys did what, did really well there to, to be out front there at the end of the pit stops and control that inside line for the rest of the way there. So, um, yeah, like I said, a really, really good job tonight, man. Um, like I said, I'm sure kind of mixed emotions on, on how it went, but, um, yeah, I mean, great job tonight and on the win and definitely want to give you the floor though for, for any thanks and shouts for that win tonight. Yeah. Thank you to, uh, you for doing the broadcast tonight for us. Uh, thank you to the drivers for, uh, cleaning up the act after uh Thursday night. It, this was definitely a much needed step in the right direction. I think for all of us. Pretty good to see out there just uh, running each other hard, especially my gosh, that beginning stage. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't expecting to be put three wide on like lap two, but uh, I was like, oh, OK. But it, but it wasn't like a, a crazy getting door banged and all of that. It was just some really hard clean racing. And I mean, that that is what has always made this league fun to run in is you were guaranteed to have to earn it. And I, I enjoy that part of it a lot. Um, really hated to see it the way it did for the other guys. Uh, but thank you to them running with me tonight. Uh, Brian, Eric, Gabe, and then uh, Cody for a bit there. I mean, he nailed his uh, pit stop, stayed with us the whole night. Uh, so great job tonight by the drivers. Yeah, and I say you guys, you guys did a really good job. And like I said, kept yourself in contention from, from the get-go there. So... I said, go, go enjoy this one. And I'll say, we got one to go and then have a little breather and then we'll get right back after it, man. So, so congrats again yeah. tonight and look forward to seeing you again here soon, sir. All right. Thank you. You have a good night. You too, man. All right. That was Kevin freeze. And like I said, yeah. So obviously I'm sure a little bit of mixed emotion for him. Like I said, you, you, you always like to win, but there's always those times where certain circumstances you, you feel a little better about getting those. And so I think that was just maybe, would have hoped that things went a little differently for him for the 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 field, I should say, the race tonight. But yeah, I mean, it's it's gonna be all down to play for here at the end. We got one more to go. Starting like I said, after tonight, it's pretty much championship week. So we've got Tuesday night, Thursday night, and Sunday night. We'll be crowning a champion. And again, to say, well, just to show you how close things are, we'll we'll do them in the in the order of when the races are. So Tuesday night um, for the Indy Series, they will be at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It is a two-point gap between our points leader, Nick DeGroote, and Bruno Miranda there in second. So those two will be the ones battling it out for the championship there. On the Thursday side of things, after last week's race at iRacing, is Rick Sanchez with an eight-point lead over Gabe Butler, 15 over Kevin, and then Adam Kilday, Eric Laurie, 22 and 23 out respectively. So depends on the on the car count, but right now I would say probably a three-horse race, but... 
I got to say, though, I mean, an eight-point lead after three races, honestly, pretty impressive by Richard. So he's going to try to get the job finished up over there. And then after tonight's event, uh, say we'll pull up our Sunday results here. And then with the points there, it is Jacob Lee leading Cody Nagels by five, eight over Gabe. Or sorry, Jacob leading Cody by five, eight over Ryan Decker, 13 over Gabe Butler. And then Richard Sanchez in fifth. They're 18 out, 19 out for Bud Steele in sixth. So, again, anything can happen. Bonus points will always be huge. I mean, you heard Jacob talk about him. He was going for that incident free race, just unfortunately had that contact at the end. Nothing he could do um, that cost him those couple bonus points as well. So, that's it for us tonight. I say I hope you all enjoyed it. I apologize for not finding out if they preferred propane or charcoal. I can tell you I have a propane propane grill at home. I don't have a charcoal grill, so hopefully Hank, Hank Hill's okay with that. Um, but, yeah, again, thank you all so much for watching, supporting. Um, I say it, it makes it so much more fun. So, yeah, so I say we'll be crowning some champions starting next week. So um, Tuesday night, Thursday night, and Sunday night. So, as always, if you can, take care, stay safe, have a great night. We'll see you all on Tuesday.